Today I'm going to be showing a tutorial about how to um, have real-time skeleton-driven collisions on a character. Um, just a short introduction to collisions in Blender. There's a number of ways that you can um, have your character interact with the environment. In this case, one way is to use uh, a box types um, collision bounds. When we play the game, um, it calculates a box around your character. Things can't go through this box. If something hits the box, it's considered to have hit the character. Now another way to do it is to use triangle mesh. This is um, uses more memory um, and you should only really use it for games where it's important to know whether you've hit the arm or the leg or whatever. Now the problem with this that we're going to address today is that although the character is moving around his um, his bounds, the triangle mesh used for the bounds, isn't moving. And you can display this by going to the game menu and put show physics visualization. Now, what we're going to do today, we're going to show how to move the, the physics mesh as well as the visual mesh. One way we can use is to use a script. Now, I've got a script here at the end of the tutorial, I'll show you where to find this. Uh, we apply this script. We've still got it on triangle mesh and bounds and static. When we press play, mm, uh, well, <laughs> it needs to be updated every frame. So you click here to put it on pulse mode. When we press play, the mesh moves at the same as the character driven by his skeleton. There's a bit of a delay though that's caused by the game gets really slow when it's recalculating the, the physics mesh every frame. We can drop it down so that it only recalculates every 12 frames and then it lags after the player a bit but it's still, it's still working. Uh, we can get even better performance than this and we can have it uh, follow more accurately the player's movements by creating another mesh. So if we remove that script, uh, we're going to turn this guy into a no bounds, no collision object. So he has no physicality now. And we bring in the low poly mesh. This is one that I've made and it's rigged and uh, attached, parented to the skeleton. When we press play, um, you can see this one's calculating the same. I want to drop that down to uh, zero. It follows almost exactly the character. The problem here is that both meshes are visible. If we select the mesh and hit invisible here, it won't recalculate. It will only recalculate visible meshes. There's a way around this. Uh, each stage throws up some bugs, but we'll deal with those as they happen. What we first need to do is switch it back onto visible and uh, go into the mm, uh, where is it ah here we go press uh, edit mode go into texture face and among these you've got invisible yeah, click on invisible and copy that to every face now when we press play the the collision mesh is invisible but the other mesh is visible and we get a decent rate from this even with it pulsing every frame you don't really need to though you can um, have it pulse every three or six frames uh, one bug that we have now is that um, blender can't select this mesh in the viewpoint because all, every every face is invisible according to blender so we can go into the outliner and we can select the mesh from here. Uh, now if we drop that down to update every three frames, get even better performance. It's only taking about 5% uh, uh, of the logic uh, performance to recalculate that. If we drop it down even further to 8 or 9, it just takes 2% of your logic. Um, to run this. So I hope you found that useful. 
And it shows that you can have real-time skeleton-driven collisions in Blender, but that it has a cost, and you have to balance the cost against the advantages.